Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't see you here. So lovely of you to drop by. I'll, I'll, I'll put away this silly instrument now that I was just, you know, desperately practicing on. And uh, let's talk for a few minutes, shall we? Because here in the dome... Oh, that's better, that's better. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't even see you there at first. Let's talk about some things, because here we are in the dome. I mean, it's the dome. The dome is a wonderful place. It's a good place to talk about things, and today we're going to talk about area. Okay, so let's talk about area. Area is an important concept. Most, most people should think about area a lot more than they actually do. Now let's make sure you can see my, my high-tech whiteboard here. Okay, there's the high-tech whiteboard that everybody can see, I hope. And we can discuss some things about area on this whiteboard, okay. I might need a few notes here, so let's bring those over here so I can see them. <coughs> let's talk about area. Area is something that you are familiar with if you've done things like carpentry. Oh, this is all done. We don't need you anymore, Mr. Clamp. There's a little bit that needed gluing. So, let's say that you have a room, and that room is 100 square feet. Like maybe it's 10 feet here and 10 feet here. It doesn't matter. Anyway, it's 100, 100 square feet. There's a 100 square foot room. And let's say you wanted to know, for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, you wanted to know from this wall how far you have to measure in here to get to 20% of the area in this room. So, what could you do? You could kind of chop it up a little bit. You could figure that out using some math, right? You could use some, some kind of weird formula with a square in it and a, something divided by something. I don't know quite what it would be. That's not important right now. What's important right now is you could figure this out. And you could figure out that here's 20%, so 20 feet, 20 square feet, and then this area here is now 80 square feet, right? Which, and that 20, uh, that 20 square feet is 20% of the area of that room, of the floor space of that room. And this is 80% of the floor space of this room. So what if we wanted to divide it up differently? What if we had a long rectangular room? like this, a long rectangle of a room, and let's say you wanted to find, you wanted to uh, say, I only want my couches on the outer 5% on each side. So you could use some other kind of math and you could figure out, you know, how far in you had to go here and how far in you had to go here so that there would be 5% or 5 square feet here and five square feet here, right? You could probably figure out how far to measure in here and how far to measure in here. Like you could look in a carpentry book or your algebra book from high school or something, which is where I would have to look because I don't actually remember how those formulas work right now. So you could, you could measure that, all right? How many square feet would be in the middle then? Well, let's say if all this together is 100 square feet, and we took away five square feet here and five square feet here, how many square feet are left to put your other furniture, have dance parties, do your yoga, whatever it is. It would be, there's five and there's five. So out of 100, we took away five and we took away another five. So this would be 90 square feet. And since it's 100, we could call those percentages. This is 5% of the area. And this is 5% of the area. And this is 90% of the area, right? That works, I believe. That's a valid use of percents. Now, what if you had an even stranger shaped room? What if you had a room that was shaped like this, like a weird big triangle? 
And let's see, make sure you can see the whole weird big triangle. Let's say you have your big weird triangle there, and someone says, you know, making only lines that go, you know, in this direction. Okay, you can see I'm kind of working into confidence intervals and normal distributions. This is going to become a normal distribution. So using only lines that go in this direction, find two, like, let's say that's north. Find the two north-south lines, perfectly north-south lines that chop off two and a half square feet. So let's say you've measured it and used some fancy formulas, and this is still 100 square feet. Let's find the two lines that give me two and a half square feet on this side and two and a half square feet on this side. Now since it's a hundred square feet we could call this percent, right? So this would be like two and a half percent and this would be two and a half percent. Well then how much area is left in the middle? Well we had a hundred and we took away two and a half and two and a half. Two and a half and two and a half, that's five. So we had a hundred and we took away five so the middle is ninety-five percent of the area. And that's what we're doing with a confidence interval. I'm going to use a different color, which I don't know if even is even going to come through on my amazing high quality video. But let's imagine that our room is shaped, you know, like that. And so we find 2.5 percent of the area here. And then 2.5 percent on my wobbly whiteboard, it's on an easel, of the area over here. And then in the middle, there will be 95%. That's the mechanics of how we calculate a confidence interval. A confidence interval is taking a normal distribution, a special kind of normal distribution, the sampling distribution of means, which you already know about, but you probably still need some practice thinking about it. It's a hard concept. So the sampling distribution of means and just finding the middle 95%. Now what we really want to know is where these lines are right here for a confidence interval. How much did we have to measure in? Now the problem with a normal distribution is that theoretically it goes to infinity over here and infinity over here. It's infinitely wide. So we can't measure from the ends. So what we do is we find the middle and we measure from the middle. How far out do we have to measure that way and that way? And it's actually the same distance. So like if, if you have to measure like 25 inches this way, then you have to measure 25 inches this way, etc. So we start from the middle, which is the mean in a sampling distribution of means, in a normal distribution. And we say, we measure this much this way, and this, this value here, it'll be like inches or temperature or scores or something like that and this value here that's our confidence interval and then what we'll end up with is something that you've seen on the news you'll say like you see like students scored on average uh, 26.5 plus or minus you know 8.6 and so this part part here would be 8.6 that's the plus 8.6 and this is the minus 8.6 and so you could take 26.5 minus 8.6 and find that number, which is what we do more in statistics. We're, we're less likely to do the plus or minus thing. We're more likely to actually work out what the plus and minus are and report these two numbers. And that's a confidence interval.